Hello everyone, welcome to class number six of my DSG models course. Remember in the past we have already covered the following topics. So today I'm going to be talking about how to use the HP filter for our data. And I'm going to talk about how to calibrate the parameters in the model. Before I proceed, I would like to let you know that there's a link in the description where you can get to the course outline. You will be able to buy the course material where I have included the do file, the slides, and also a paper where I have sold the math and have included some more information about these type of models. But basically you will have all the information organized. And at the end, you can download the data set that we are going to be using in today's class. And you can also download the dynamic equations for free that we have used in Stata to write down the model. On the left hand side, you will also be able to go through my other courses in case you are interested. We have covered many things in Stata, eViews, and also how to write research papers using LaTeX with Overleaf. Let's begin talking today then about the Hodrick Prescott filter, which is also abbreviated as the HP filter. So this filter will allow us to decompose a time series into trend and cycle components. So you can see we have here that our variable of interest, in this case, YT would be the real GDP for USA. We can decompose it into trend and the cycle. The trend is going to show us the long-term path of the variable, whereas the cycle is going to show us the short run dynamics. We are more interested in this course about the cycle. Uh, it's also commonly as associated with the output gap, which is basically the deviation of the actual level of output from the long-term trend. In other words, what we are doing is we are saying that the cycle is equal to the difference between the trend and the actual GDP. Without getting into very deep details, what we are doing is basically the following with the HP filter. In the first term, we have the sum of the square differences between the actual output and the trend. On the second term, we have the square of the trend component second differences, which basically this is showing the smoothness, smoothness of the trend, sorry. And then the term lambda is what it's going to determine the amount of volatility associated with the trend. The higher the lambda, the smaller the volatility. Lastly, it's very important to mention that the HP filter assumes a linear growth. Logs will need to be applied to certain variables such as GDP or CPI before we can apply the HP filter. Some of the values that are normally assigned to the lambda is 1600 for quarterly data, 100 for yearly data, and 14,400 for monthly data. You can practice with the code and you can change the values of lambda. And what you are going to see is that the bigger uh, the lambda, the smaller the volatility in the series. In this slide, I have included in the left side the actual GDP and the trend. We have decomposed the real GDP using the HP filter with lambda equals 1600 because we are working with quarterly data. Furthermore, as I have explained before, we need to apply the logarith logarithms to the variable GDP and I have multiplied this times 100 just to have it in percentage terms. In red, we can see the trend, and in blue, we can see the actual GDP. We can see periods where the difference between the actual and the trend are positive. This is a positive output gap. Here, there is a negative uh, output gap, positive output gap, negative output gap, and so on. On the right, we can see the percentage deviation from trend, which this is the cycle. This is what we are decomposing with the HP filter. We are getting the trend on one side, but on the other side, we're getting the percentage deviation from trend. And you can understand this as periods where here there is a negative deviation from trend. This is a positive, negative, positive. And it's important for you to know what are the events that happen in all of these troughs here. It's important to know what happened as the 2008 crisis, here COVID, uh, prior to the 80s, we had the issue associated with the oil crisis. So as an exercise, it's good for you to be able to identify what happened in the periods of expansion and what happened in the periods of contractions. We are now in Stata. I have split my screen. So on the left hand, we have the do file on, la on my right, you will be able to see the output. So the first thing that you will need to do is to import the data, of course. 
there's a link in the description where you can download the data set. So I'm going to run this code. We import the data. Here we have all our variables. The next thing that we need to do is to T set a time variable. I have covered with great details. There's a link that should be appearing now on the on the right hand side here where you can see that tutorial if you don't know how to do this. But basically we're going to generate a variable that is going to be a quarterly time series variable. And we are going to give a format of quarterly data and we're going to T set that variable. This is basically the code. You just run it. And here we have, now we have assigned a time variable. Here we have it, it's called um, quarters. We can indeed drop the variable time. Let me put this in without the capitals. There, we dropped our old variable. Now to use the HP filter, the first thing we need to do is to apply logs to our GDP variable. So I'm going to type the following, just generate. I'm going to call the variable L for logs, GDP, then equals. And then all you're going to do is to type LN, open parentheses, and then the name of the variable. The name of the variable is GDP. So here we go. And the last thing that I want to do is to multiply this a uh, hundred times. So we have this in percentage terms. So now we can run this code. And here we go. We have generated our variable LGDP. So now we, it's a good time to use the HP filter command. To use the HP filter command, you're going to type TS filter. And then you have to give the name of the filter that you want to use. There are different um, filters available in Stata. But for today, we're going to be using the HP filter. So you type HP. And now the next thing that you need to do is to give a name for the new variable that is going to be generating the filter. So I would like to call it Y. OK, that's going to be equals to. And the next thing that we need to do is to tell which variable you want to apply the filter to. So the variable is going to be LGDP. So GDP in logs, right? The next is type comma. In We're going to write smooth. And in parentheses, you're going to be assigning the number of lambda. Remember that we have talked that for quarterly data, lambda is going to be equal to 1600. Yeah? So in smooth, you're going to be assigning the value of lambda. The next thing that we are going to do is to write the command trend, the option trend, and write whatever the name you want to assign to this. You can call it trend, you can call it whatever, all right? So I'll, just to keep it simple, I call that's going to be the name of the new variable that Stata is going to create. If you don't include the option trend, then Stata is not going to generate any trend. So I'm going to then run this code. And on the right hand side, you can see that now Stata has created two things. It has created the variable Y. That's what we just asked. That's to generate this variable Y in here and it's the cyclical component. And on the other hand, it has generated the trend. So that's the trend a component. So what we can do is generate the graph. I'm going to type TS line, then I'm going to write L GDP, and then we can type trend. So you can see this is the, the graph that I showed you in the previous slide. And here are the moments where the, where the actual GDP is below the trend, moments where it's up the trend below above below below above and so on okay so now what we can do as well is to graph the the cycle so i'm going to type ts line in the commands and i'm going to type in here um uh, y sorry that's the name of the cycle so here we have the cycle or well the cyclical component and that's going to be all for the part of importing the data. We have imported the data. We have generated the time variable. We have generated the logs of GDP. And then we have applied the HP filter. Now let's talk about the parameters calibration. So calibration implies assigning values to the parameters in the model. The values are often assigned based on the accepted values in the literature, or they are assigned to much specific data moments. The targets can be derived from the national accounts of the country that you are investigating. For example, for the US, you will take a look at the NIPA, which is the National Income and Products Accounts. Remember the parameters to be calibrated in our model are beta, alpha, 
delta, and gamma. Beta is the intertemporal discount factor, and we are going to use values that are often assigned in the literature. In this case, I'm going to be using 0.98. Uh, just know that the value of beta can change depending on the data frequency. The second one is the input share. The literature suggests one third, um, so we are going to be given this value around 0.33. Delta is a depreciation rate for developed economies is around 0 0.028. Um, again, this value you can look at the literature and see what is the depreciation rate assigned. To, to these values. There's also in the national accounts, you can find values for depreciation rate as well. Um, it all depends whether the website does have that information for your uh, sample economy. And then we have uh, the gamma, that is a leisure share parameter. I'm going to set this value to 3.3, just to match hours worked 20% in the steady state. So to assign the values of the parameters in our do file, what we'll have to do is for the constraint number one is beta. Remember, we have just agreed to use 0.98, which is the intertemporal consumption. The second one is going to be alpha, which we have said it's 0.33. The next one is going to be the delta, the depreciation rate. We have agreed in 0 0.28, 0 0.28. Uh, let me just fix in here this little space. There we go. And for the elasticity leisure, we have said that we calibrated this to 3.3. So those are all the values of our parameters. Our dual file is looking great. We already have the data. We have here the HP filter. Let me put um, here HP filter. That's the code. That's great. And we have already defined this in our previous video, which is the dynamics equation of the model. The last thing that we're going to do in the next tutorial so we can finally get to the results of the steady state is we're going to be, of course, computing the steady state, computing other type of post-estimation results that are going to be very important. And we're going to be then talking about impulse response functions and the out-of-sample forecast. Then we're going to be taking a look at the model properties. We're going to see how this model matches the data and what is uh, looking like the uh, prediction of the model. So that's going to be all for today. Remember to subscribe if you're interested in getting a notification next time that my next tutorials are coming up. And also remember there's a link where you can get the material for this video and you can also buy all the material of the course. Thank you very much for watching and take care.